PC Expert Amateur here, and we're going to take a look at the last and the largest fan that I currently have. Hopefully in the future I can afford to get more large fans, but at this time they tend to be expensive, and there isn't a lot of demand for them as far as I'm aware anyways. So this is actually a brand that was uh, was requested, uh, Yate Loon. And this is an, one of their older fans, but it is still on their website, surprisingly. Some of the other fans, like that Aerocool, uh, they don't have it on their website. Um, so this is the D22SL-12H, and this is a 220-millimeter fan, and that is a 30-millimeter thickness. So that suggests that this is going to have pretty darn good... Um, airflow and static pressure but we'll find out but you know it's it's a it's not a glorious looking fan it does have four blue um, LEDs in it so if I remember correctly they're blue maybe they're red I forgot silly me um, let's find out it has both a three pin connector and then both um, it's got two um, male and female Molex D connectors as well. And a fairly long three pin un unsleeved uh, cable. You know, it's three wires basically, not even a cable. So yeah, four lights are visible. No way to control those. So some of the power for the fan is being sucked up by those LEDs, unfortunately. And this is actually a pretty a kind of noisy fan. Got quite the hum. So, what do you think of that? I have too many options for fan controllers now. I've got, well, I've got three controllers and a hub. So, <laughs> I want to do a little thing, since this is the last of the super large fans, what I want to do is I want to um, run through the range of sound on this and compare it to the Bitphoenix, the Thermal Take, and the Aerocool, so you can at least have that understanding. So we'll start with this, obviously. Actually, are you okay with that? Or do you want me to do a separate video? I think I'll do a separate video. But I will let you hear the range of sound for this one. This uh, at this speed, it's virtually inaudible. Now there, now there's a very deep hum. Something's rattling. I don't think there's any resonances, but there is that deep hum. <coughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, this fan is not particularly stable. Oh, it's oh, okay. It's the frame. The frame is not strong enough. So when I'm 
I can actually warp it by pulling on the corners. Um, so be, be very careful with this one. You can very easily distort the frame and end up causing the fan blades to rub against it. And at worst, worst case scenario, you're going to snap a fan blade. And then what are you going to do? Just look at the blue lights. Hardly seems like a good idea to me. All right, so um, this one doesn't... It has almost no bl um, static pressure to it. I mean, it's it's only really like right here that I can really feel it. And yeah, it's it's pretty darn weak. It's probably weaker than the arrow cool. Um, so yeah, maybe it, may it's good for a case fan, especially on exhaust. Um, but it's just kind of too weak, really. Um, like the other ones. I mean, I'm not sure which is weaker, this or the arrow cool. But uh, let's take a look at the specs. Okay, so the 8 Loon Electronics D22SL-12H or from the DC fan series from long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. And if you didn't notice it when I said it before, this is a 220 millimeter by 30 millimeter fan. Clear. I have no idea what the certifications are. It's supposed to be on the label, but it's not. Made in China, 220 by 30, as I said. I don't know what the um, warranty and such is with these fans. There may not be a warranty for these fans, um, especially since they're so old. Uh, it just got has the four blue LEDs, 270 grams, which makes it the second heaviest one after the thermal take at 300 and uh, 11 blades, like all but the Bit Phoenix, 170 millimeters between holes, 600 RPMs maximum which gives it an actual pretty high, and unsurprisingly, given the, the thickness, uh, CFM of 135. That's pretty good airflow. Unfortunately, I don't know what the static pressure is for this. It's not listed. I would guess it's somewhere in the area of the aero cool. And supposedly the volume is 25.5. I kind of feel like this is an over estimation on their part I feel it's probably uh, lower the fans so called cable is 30 and a half centimeters long you can daisy chain there's no sleeving it's 3 pin DC plus male and female Molex D um, it's a sleeve bearing 12 volts 7.2 watts and wow 7.2 watts <laughs> and 0.6 amps so, you know, looking at this from the perspective of price, um, initial cost, you know, you're probably going to have a better deal with the AeroCool or the 8 Loon. However, in terms of over time, the 8 Loon is going to be the most expensive to run, um, uh, followed by the Bit Phoenix. But the Bit Phoenix is like, wow, well, not a bit over half of the consumption of the uh, Yate Loon. So, you know, you might want to actually consider the thermal take if you're trying to save money and definitely ignore the AeroCool because it's not the most conservative in terms of power usage, nor does it have significant amounts of power. There are no indicators of rotation and flow. You get, um, I didn't get anything with this, and there's nothing special about this. So I don't know if I just luck, uh, was unfortunate or if, if it normally comes with screws. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, it's don't forget about the flexible frame. That's all there is to it. I'd like to thank Grindler at Bleeping Computer 
for allowing me to share my videos and posts on his website. Bleeping Computer has a lot of resources, including vetted programs, malware removal instructions, uh, malware removal volunteers, uh, other kinds of volunteers for IT, cybersecurity information, and more. It's a great place to go. Give it a try. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.